today's topic is outsourcing production to your suppliers, utilizing your local supply chain. My name is Michael Sullivan. I'm a solution consultant at BSP. I've been at NetSuite for eight years. Uh, prior to the eight years at NetSuite, I spent around 20 plus years in manufacturing and distribution, working with several mid to large ERP companies in Europe and North America. And today's topic is outsourcing. And think of that as you subcontracting a production operation uh, to a supplier or potentially to multiple suppliers. Two years ago, NetSuite built a specific set of features to support this process, and I'll walk you through those today. Uh, one of the big things, it automatically links work orders and purchase orders together and allows you to actually complete the quantities uh, produced by your supplier either through an item receipt or through building a work order. Because we're both connected, they update each other as you're doing that transaction. If you have a supply chain where potentially one supplier completes one operation, then sends it to another supplier that can also be supported through this particular set of functionality. So let me get into what we're going to look at today. So in order to facilitate all of this, we need a supplier, that's your subcontractor. We need a location, and that's the location at the supplier where the inventory will be sitting. We need a service item, which is the service charge that the supplier will be charging you. We have the inventory item, which is the raw materials we're gonna consume. We have the assembly item that ties those two together. We have a bill of material, Right, which is the structure of the components. And then the work order is where I'm going to start. We'll trigger the purchase order, and then we're going to receive the purchase order and update the work order. From a flowchart perspective, think of this. If you were a promotional company, as an example, and you put logos and embroidery potentially onto a shirt, the first step, obviously, is that you would purchase the actual shirt. You might bring that into your own inventory or potentially have that sent directly to the print supplier that's going to put the logo on there. Other option is transferring the inventory out to the um, subcontractor. That could be a transfer order uh, or, again, really just drop shipping from the shirt supplier directly there. All right, and then we talked about the purchase order, the work order. So we're going to create a work order, trigger the purchase order. When we receive it, we're going to build the work order that's going to roll up our costs uh, and go into inventory, and that means we can sell the product and ship it out to our customer. So let's look at that in NetSuite. And I've kind of lined up uh, everything in NetSuite from left to right on the tabs. So we'll start off with the supplier. There is a key component of it. So this is my printing company. This printing company is located just outside of San Francisco. And the main component here is if we go to the outsourcing tab, we can see it is tied to a location. So that is the location where the inventory will sit for the raw material and potentially also the finished good. Location is set up just like any other location. So I just switch tabs here. Completely nothing custom here. What I'm doing is I'm defining that it's you know included in all of the supply planning, it's included in the control tower, and inventory is available for usage. The next thing is I, because my example is a shirt, I have a raw material, which is the shirt before it gets embroidered, before it gets printed. Nothing special here, right? We're gonna buy that, we're gonna receive it, we're either gonna transfer it or drop ship it directly to the supplier. The next thing in line is the service item. So this is a service for purchase. 
So if you create a new item, right? A new, that would be a type of an item that you could create. The main part that drives this is right here, the cost category. So this is a new predefined cost category called outsourcing charge. <clears throat> this will help drive the whole process. <clears throat> All right. Next, we have an assembly item, which is the shirt. Now with the BMW logo, the Oracle logo, Oracle USA logo, all of this is being applied at the actual printing company. And we have a bill of material, all right? So the assembly, when we look at the bill of material, right, we have, I'm using advanced bill of materials here. So think of advanced bills of material, allow you to have better control of your revisions. In this case, it's linked only to a singular assembly available to every production location I have one revision. And if we look at our parts here, notice I have the service item, I have the raw material. Those two are going to be part of that process. All right, so if you're creating the work order for the outsourcing process, I would probably suggest doing that through like a reorder point uh, system or through supply planning and the MRP process here that I have described in one of the previous videos. But let's go to the work order. So I created this earlier and again, it's got a work order number. It's located at the supplier. That's the important part. It has to be located at the supplier because that is where the completion is going to happen. We have the assembly, right? We have the bills of material that we talked about. We have an estimated start date and end date. Now think of these things again, these can be calculated now with the new MRP engine. Uh, you could also set a fixed lead time completely up to you. But notice from the bill of material, only one of the components is showing up, and that is the white polo shirt. I have nine of them available. And notice the new sub tab here called outsourcing. So when you create a work order for this item in this location, the system will automatically identify this as an outsourced work order. It'll bring the default vendor in, the default charge. And you can see here there's a link to PO. So once I click this, which I'm doing now, the system creates the purchase order out to the supplier, linking it back to the original work order automatically. Now, if I would have done this earlier again, uh, this would be going a little bit faster, but first time I've done this today, and you can see we have a purchase order. Now, the purchase order looks like every other purchase order, except for that it now has a link to the assembly. The service item got brought in through the work order. Notice it's linked to the work order, very important. It's linked to the bill of material. It's linked to the revision. So think of it from a process perspective. Right? You scheduled an outsourced work order. It triggered the purchase order at a specific time. So you could trigger this at a specific date, right? You could have a reminder, you could have an alert that helps you with that. That creates the PO, it gets sent off to your supplier. The supplier has the inventory already. So if I go down into my inventory snapshot here, you can see here is the warehouse. I have a couple on order and I have some on hand. I, and this is for a little bit later. And here's my San Francisco warehouse, but we can see this particular one 
I have inventory on hand, I have some on order, and that is the current status. Now, you can complete the work order or you can receive. It really depends on which direction you start the process. So if I were to start with a purchase order, then create the work order, I'd be able to build the work order because I created the work order and that went to the purchase order, it's asking me to receive it. So think of it, your supplier says, hey, I'm done. You can either now pick up the inventory or I can ship it to you. And this is also another important part. Um, if I complete receipt here to this warehouse, the assumption is that I'm going to go pick up the inventory, right? Because it's sitting there. If I change this to San Francisco, though, the assumption is that the supplier is going to transfer it to me. And then over here, notice this extra column. When I click on that, it brings up the work order information. So notice now I have the assembly, the bills of material, the quantity that defaulted. If I, this was lot controlled or serialized, I could pick a serialized item. If the component was lot controlled or serialized, I could pick that component here. Once I save this and I save this, what I'm doing is I'm finishing off the loop here. I'm creating the item receipt, which creates the work order build. And now all of the inventory goes into my location. And the location it went into is San Francisco. Now notice here that the system has automatically created an inventory transfer. Because standard purchasing functionality would have assumed that the PO location would also be equal to the receipt location. But because I asked for it to be transferred, the system has automatically moved the inventory from one location to another. When I go back to the work order and just hit the refresh button, and I go to, let's say, related records here, and I click on the assembly build. You'll see that here is the assembly build that was created. Here's the projected value. And if we go to the GL impact, I had $2.50, which I paid for the shirt, and $2.50 for the actual screen printing, which makes this shirt five dollars at a cost to me like all right so quick summary and then we're done right we had inventory already sitting at the supplier we created a work order which triggered the purchase order we received it which created the build and that created the whole process so again pretty simple really uh, from a setup perspective let's really quick before we stop today look at an example if you were going to have multiple suppliers and I've created this work order already. 752 is a different work order. As I scroll down, you'll see that there's a slight difference here. I actually have a work order that includes two sub-assemblies. Each one of the sub-assemblies is a different process step. So first in this step, I had the t-shirt printed with a logo. Then, and you can see here's the work order for that. And then I sent it to have it embroidered. So let's assume, you know, first there's a little Oracle logo that goes on it. And then I get a little, you know, embroidery done on my arm that that supplier cannot do. So in this case, we would have generated two purchase orders, which equal to the two work orders, All right? So here's work order number one. And again, the same thing again, here's the purchase order. 
And then work order number two, here's the other purchase order. So in this case, what I would do is as supplier number one completes their process, I would receive that quantity. As the second supplier completes their quantity, I would complete the second purchase order. And then that would complete my entire production process and purchasing process. So that is a simple way by having multiple sub-assemblies, you can have multiple process steps, therefore multiple suppliers built into supply chain. The most I've done up to now is four. We had a company that outsourced four different operations in China and sent them from one supplier to another in order to complete the production process. So if you're interested in this topic, feel free to contact BSP, the solution consultant and implementation people can definitely help you with this. Thank you for very much for listening. Hopefully we'll see each other again soon.